To paraphrase Harris O'Malley from the Good Men Project, toxic masculinity is a narrow description of manhood in which men are defined by sexual conquest, control and dominance over other people, violence, and brutality. If men exhibit any qualities that can be considered quote unquote feminine, empathy, sympathy, sensitivity, your man card can be taken away from you at any time. But most of all, Toxic masculinity is the fear of appearing weak. In the 1993 drama Menace to Society, we spent a few days following around Kane and Old Dog who happen to be drug dealers in Los Angeles. As one would imagine, their daily lives are submerged in a world of crime and danger. But I want to point out how toxic masculinity and gun violence makes this an existence that is almost impossible to survive. Before I go on, let me say that these archaic concepts of manhood that strangle many of the characters in this film are present in many other facets of life as well besides drug and crime culture in Los Angeles. It's in the fraternity hazing death of Baruch College student Michael Dang. Dang was blindfolded and forced to lug 20 pounds of sand in a knapsack while he was repeatedly tackled headfirst by members of the Pi Delta Psi fraternity until he was knocked unconscious. Dang died the next day from brain injuries trying to fit in, trying to be considered a man among his peers. Before concussion protocol, it was on the football field. Countless NFL players have lied to medical staff saying that they didn't have headaches because they didn't want to let the team down. The old adage, finish the game like a man, has led to 87 of the 91 NFL players who have donated their brains to science to test positive for CTE. CTE is a condition associated with athletes who after repeated head trauma, gradually lose all of their cognitive abilities. All right, enough of the background. Let's get into the film. In the first and most infamous scene of the movie, Kane and Old Dog are getting beer at a convenience store where they are harassed by the store owner, being told to Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and go. After Kane pays for their beer, the store owner seals his fate by mumbling to Old Dog I feel sorry for your mother. Now for all intents and purposes, we don't see or meet Old Dog's mother in this film. In fact, we don't know if she's dead or alive because the line in and of itself I feel sorry for your mother isn't about Old Dog's mother or her job as a parent. It's a direct and personal attack on Old Dog as a son and as a man. What you say about my mama? We know from our previous definition that manhood is defined by strength and dominance. Passivity is not accepted here. There is no walking peacefully out of the store after an insult like that. There is no taking the weak way out. For this offense, the store owner and his wife paid with their lives. During a flashback scene, we see Kane's father, who was a drug dealer played by Sam Jackson, asking one of his associates, where's my money during a car game? The man says, I don't have it. Sam says, what you mean you ain't got it? The man says, I just spent five years in the joint. I ain't afraid of you. I pay your monkey hoss when I feel like it. This is a direct attack. This is a man challenge. So Sam pulls out his gun and shoots the guy in the middle of the car game. Kane witnesses all of this as a child, internalizing that violence is the best means to handle conflict. Later in the film, Kane is at a red light on Crenshaw with his cousin Harold. A group of guys pull up next to them and are in the process of robbing them. With a handgun and a shotgun pointed at them, the gunman says, get out of the car. Now you know what, if it was me, I'd be like, you know what brother, I don't really need this car. What I really need is some exercise. I'm walking home. Enjoy. And does Harold do that? Of course not. Harold turns to his cousin and says, Can't get out the car, man. I ain't going on like a chump. Instead of getting out of the car, Harold reaches for his gun. The armed robber then shoots Harold in the head and shoots Kane in the shoulder. Harold chose to pay the penalty of death to maintain his masculinity and to prevent himself from going out like a chump. Next, Old Dog finds out where the guys who shot Kane and Harold stay and then proposes to Kane that they should retaliate. And at this point, Kane could simply reply, Nah, bruh, I just got shot. Harold's dead. I'm done. And does Kane say that? Of course not. 
because it's about his ego. It's about the machismo. It's about the concept of toxic masculinity, which is defined by violence. This is no longer about his dead cousin, Harold, as it is about Old Dog and Kane reestablishing dominance in the situation. They find the guys, kill him, and retake pole position. Kane gets a young woman pregnant who he had a fling with. She calls Kane to tell him the news. He says, girl, the baby ain't mine, and hangs up the phone. She tells her cousin. Her cousin goes to confront Kane in front of the neighborhood. Check this out. I'm Alina's cousin, partner. She don't like the way you've been dogging her, and I don't either. Now, here's another opportunity for Kane. He could have said, nah, bruh, I don't think the baby's mine, nevertheless, just to make sure we can get a paternity test. But does he do that? <laughs> Kane knocks the man down and kicks the sonic rings out of him. As if you didn't see this coming, the young man who Kane kicked the terabyte out of has to now defend his masculinity. This is not about his cousin or the baby anymore hence he drives to Kane's girlfriend's house along with a group of friends they shoot and kill Kane along with his good friend Sharif this is what toxic masculinity does it destroys men like a virus and affects everyone around them because of his need to feel dominant because of his refusal to look like a punk or show empathy Kane became a victim of his own actions falling prey to another man who couldn't tolerate being seen as weak as we speak, I'm working on being able to create videos full time. So if you like this video, any other opinion pieces that I've done, any film reviews, any book reviews, please go to the Patreon link in my comment section and pledge a dollar. That dollar goes a long way as far as helping me acquire new equipment, helping me pay people behind and in front of the camera, especially if you've seen any of my book reviews. A lot of manpower and woo manpower goes into making those things happen. And to be totally upfront with y'all, it helps me spend less time out there in the Hunger Games and more time in here shooting and editing video that I love, that you enjoy on a more consistent basis. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs>